worship you. Oh, I need some believers up in here, sir. Come on. We worship you yeah. in this house. I need a witness up in here. A living sacrifice. Give you all the glory. Give you all the glory. We give you all of the glory. Do I have any true believers up in here? We honor you. Just wave your hands. For you're the king. Let everything that I breath praise the Lord. Let everything that I breath praise the Lord. For his mighty acts and his wondrous works. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Come on, Lord. once again. Yeah. Everything that I pray, praise what a mighty God we serve. Everything that I pray, praise the Lord for His mighty acts and His wondrous works. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. We, we give you honor, oh Lord, we give you glory. We give you honor, oh Lord, we give you glory. Oh, oh, hallelujah to our God. Oh Lord, we give you honor. I waited patiently for the Lord, and He. In- All right, saints of God. Don't just forget about all your troubles and your fights. It's right now, it ain't about you. It's about the Father. Come on up in here. We honor you, Jesus. We honor you. Why, y'all? For you're the King of kings and Lord of lords. Together, together, together. That's why we worship. Worship. Oh, I need some believers up in here, sir. Come on. We worship you yeah. in yeah. this house. I, can somebody. I need a witness of this. Sanctuary. A living sacrifice. Give you all give the glory. You all the glory. We give you all of the glory yeah. right now. Do I have any true believers up in here? Take your seat. 
if you will. And again, I say good morning. If you can hear the sound of my voice, good morning. There we go. That's what I'm looking for. And welcome to the Rosier Road Church of Christ. This is the start of the gospel meeting this week. And we are very, very happy and glad and proud to be here. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, I'm not a regular. <laughs> but this is a home technically for me. Uh, my name is Doug Williams, Jr. Uh, I bring you greetings from the Northwest Church of Christ in Glendale. Um, and I'm very happy to be here and to worship with you all today. And uh, I'll be your worship leader today. Is that all right? Yeah. All right. Well, we're going to sing a little bit and, and then hear the word a little bit later on. But we're just going to give God some praise today. Is that all right? Yeah. I am a hard fighting soldier and I'm on the battlefield. Yes, I am a hard fighting soldier and I'm on the battlefield. Yes, I am a hard fighting soldier. And I'm on the battlefield. Yes, I keep on bringing souls to Jesus by the service that I do. Yes, I keep on bringing souls to Jesus by the service that I do. And I'm just a hard fighting soul, Lord, and I'm on the. You know that I'm just a hard fighting soul, Lord, and I'm on the. Well, and I'm just a hard fighting. Well, you know that I'm on the battle. You know that I keep on praying. So to Jesus, I bring them by the service that I will. And I've got a helmet on my head and in my hand. You know that I've got a helmet on my head Lord, and in my hand a sword. Well, and I've got a helmet on my head and in my hand. You know that I keep on bringing souls to Yes, I bring them by the service. You know that I'm just a hard fighting soldier, Lord, and I'm on the battle. You know that I'm just a hard fighting soldier. Lord, and I'm on the battle. Yes, I'm a hard-fighting soldier. Lord, and I'm on the battle. You know that I keep on bringing souls to Yes, I bring them by the service that I will. And I've got to walk, talk, and sing. Pray you all on the battle. You know that I to walk, talk, sing, pray along this old battlefield, Lord, and I've got to walk, talk, and sing, pray along the battle. You know that I keep on bringing souls to Yes, I bring them by the service that you know that I'm just a hard fighting soldier, Lord, and I'm on the battle. You know that I'm just a hard fighting soldier, Lord, and I'm on the battle. Yes, I'm a hard fighting soldier, Lord, and I'm on the battle. Well, and I keep on bringing souls to Jesus. Well, and I keep on bringing souls to Jesus. Yes, I bring them by the service that I give. Amen. Turn it off. Let's go to God of prayer. Once again, our gracious Father, we come before your holy throne thanking you for the many blessings that you've bestowed upon us thus far. Father, we thank you for the blessings that we are unconscious to and oblivious to because we know that you do all things and all things happen through you. Yes. Father, we pray as we go through this service that you be with us all, that we send this service up as a sweet smell of savor to you sure and that it is accepted. Sure Father, we pray that the people that come before you today, that their hearts are in the right place and the hearts are going in the right direction trying to bring souls to you. Yeah. We pray that this service is a success and that this gospel meeting goes in and brings more souls to you. Yes, sir. In Jesus' name we pray. 
Amen. 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 Y'all bear with me today. It's been a while since I led out of a songbook. <laughs> well, well, yeah, right. Got to got to got to mention the song page. Where, where, where I worship at now, we um, we don't use songbooks no more. <laughs> Not really. Um, but I, you know, like I said, this is home for me. So it's kind of a homecoming, if you will, and uh, coming back and being with you all is it's a blessing. I'm happy to be here. Amen. Amen. So if you will, turn with me to page number 365. Page number 365. I also had to remember what songs I was singing today. I gave a list to Bash, and I was like, man, what am I singing today? I don't need to remember. So if, if you see my, excuse my phone, that's what that is. That's my, uh, my song list for today. Page 365. We all have a show to sing. If for the prize we have given after our labors are rolled, oh, and a rest to our souls will be given, and on that eternal shore, singing home, home of the soul, blessed King, kingdom of life. Don't you want to be free from all care? Lord, and we're fall, fall in the night. Oh, Lord, on in the storm, we are sighed, longing for thee. Oh, it's a beautiful mother and son beside the crystal sea. Oh, and yes, the sweet rest is remaining. Oh, and it's for the true children of God. And we know that where there will be no complaint. Oh, and there's never a chastening. And it's only at the home, home of the soul. You know, blessed can we kingdom of life. Don't you want to be free from all care and no longer fall all in the night? Oh, Lord, up in the storm, you know we are sad, longing for thee. Oh, it's a beautiful home, a ransom beside the crystal sea. Trust till the night is night, and it's only at the home, home of the soul. Oh, blessed King, and I'm alive, and don't you want to be free from my care and you know and where for fall it no night. Oh, and on, off in the storm. Outside and longing for thee. Oh, it's a beautiful home. The the crystal sea. Only at the home, home of the soul. And Lord, bless it, King. And don't you want to be free?
Amen. Amen. Page number 50 in the supplemental song book. Page number 50. Page number 50. We have it, shall we say? There are some things I may not know, not know. And there are some places I, I can go, I cannot go. Well, and but I am sure. Of this one thing, well, that my God is real, for I can feel Him in my soul. Yes, you know God is real. He's so real in my soul. Well, and my God is real. For he has washed and gave me hope. His love for me, yes, is just like your gold. Well, and my God is real, for I can feel him in my soul. Yes, my can tell, can not tell just how you felt. Oh, when Jesus was, he was your sin, he was them away. Well, and but since that day, yes, and since that I. been real for I can feel his holy power yes and God is real oh he's real in my soul oh and my God is real oh for he has I'll be reading Romans chapter 5, verses 8 through 11 today. But God demonstrated his own love towards us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us, much more than having now been justified by his blood, we shall be saved and worthy through him. For if when we were enemies, we were we reconcile to God through the death of his son. Much more having been reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only that, but we also rejoice 
and God through the Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received the re, re- reconciliation. Amen. 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 Right now, I'm going to call up Brother Jesse Murad to give us a, a verse of a song before our, our main prayer. Good morning, church family. It's good to see y'all here today. You know what's impressive? All these young people in here. Yes, sir. It was a time when they, when, when they would say that, and I was one of the young people. Yeah. <laughs> now I get to say it. All these young people in here. Page number four, if you don't mind. Thank you. Brother Doug is a great song leader. We appreciate his, his uh, offering to the Lord today. I am thine, O Lord, I've heard thy voice. I am thine, O Lord, I am heard thy voice, and it told thy love to me. But I long to rock in the arms of faith and be closer to wrong. To where thou has died, your army near, come, come, Lord, near a blessed Lord, to thy precious believing side, oh, consecrate me not to thy servant, Lord, by Power of grace and and let my soul look up with the steadfast hope, and my will be lost in die. Help me play the larger army. Lord, to the cross, and where thou hast died, draw me nearer, Lord, nearer, blessed Lord, to thy precious believing sign. Now there are depths of love and Till I cross the narrow sea And there are heights of joy that I may not reach Until I rest in peace with thee Oh, hear me, y'all, sailor army Lord, to the cross where thou, thou hast died. Oh, draw me nearer, 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 blessed Lord, to the precious belief. Would you draw, would you draw? To the cross where thou, thou hast died, oh, draw me near, 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 Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let us bow our head, go to our Heavenly Father in prayer. Dear Lord, our Heavenly Father, 
the one who sits up high and looks down low upon each and every one of us. We come to you in humble hearts and just saying thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes. Thank you, this, Lord, for this morning, letting us rise again, letting this day be put forth to worship you in no other than spirit and in truth. Yes. Thank you for the vision here at Roger Road to have this gospel meeting starting today yes. to just uplift your word and put your word in the community and that we can just uh, let the seed be set. The seed be planted and the soul be reaped. Dear Lord, we come to you on behalf of the churches of Christ all over this land and country. Yeah. Please be with the ministers that step in the pool pits this morning. Let them yes. preach your word boldly without any addition or subtraction. Yes. And let those ears uh, take note and learn from what is being taught and what thus said the Lord. Please, yeah. Lord, we come to you in special prayer. We thank you for our visitors that was here with us this morning. Yeah. They could be any other place, but you chose for them to be with here at Rosa Road to worship you in the spirit and the truth. Wow. We thank you for our man servant that's come here to preach. He left his congregation there in Arkansas. Come here to be with Rosa Road. Be with the Phoenix area just to spread the gospel. Uh, well, Please, Lord, just be with him. Keep him safe. Keep his family uh, safe while he's away. Keep his congregation safe. Yeah, yeah. And just let him come up here and preach your word boldly without any addition or subtraction. And let us just have an open heart and open mind to take in what's down. being taught this morning. Yes, sir. Please, Lord, be with those that was once in the faith yeah. but turned away. Ooh. Please, Lord, let them make it back before it's everlasting too late. Lord, and Lord, we just thank you for all that you do for us. Lord, forgive us of our sins, our shortcomings. Be with those sick and afflicted. Touch them with a finger of love. Let them come back and be with us at the next appointed time. And Lord, just be with us this week as we go out uh, and set your word out here in this Phoenix community. Let it be let it be done as you would have it to be done. Please, Lord, we thank you in all you do. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Let everybody say, Amen. 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 Let us notice page number 311 as we uh, prepare our hearts and minds for communion. 310. I think it's 310. No, it's 311. 311. Page number 311. And Gethsemane alone. We'll sing the, we'll sing them all, we'll sing them all, we're here, we'll sing them all, is that all right? Yes, sir. Oh, what a wondrous love I see, for really shown for you and me, by the one who did atone, and just to show his matchless grace. My Jesus suffered for the race, and he did it when in Gethsemane alone. And oh, what love, what a matchless love. Yes, yes, 
As we continue this morning in our worship service, this time is set aside that we should be reflecting back on the time that Jesus Christ suffered and died on the cross for my sins, for your sins, and for the sins of the whole world. And there, are exa there is an example in the scriptures that tells us how often we should do this. And that scripture is found in Acts 20 and verse 7. And it says, And upon the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul preached to them, ready to part on the morrow. And then he continued his speech unto midnight. There are many examples on how we should partake of the Lord's body and of his shed blood. I will be using the example taken from 1 Corinthians 11, 23, beginning at verse number 23. That's 1 Corinthians, the 11th chapter, beginning at verse number 23. For I have received of the Lord that which also I have delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and says, take it. Eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do ye in remembrance of me. And then after the same manner, he also took the cup. And when he had said, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, you do show the Lord's death. Till he comes. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat of this bread and drink of this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood 
of the Lord. But let every man examine himself. And so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation unto himself, not discerning the Lord's body. Does everyone have a communion cup? If you do not, please raise your hand so the brethren may assist you. Let us go to our Heavenly Father in prayer. Eternal God, our Heavenly Father, we pray, O Heavenly Father, that as we take of this bread and we take of this cup, we do it in remembrance of the pain and suffering that you endured upon the cross for the sins of the whole world. These and other blessings we ask in thy darling Son, Jesus Christ. In his name, amen. amen. Let us commune. As we continue into our worship service, you know, a lot of those other individuals that profess to be members of the body of Christ, they get this part right. They, they're going to give every, every time they open the door. They're going to do that. But we are also commanded to give upon the first day of the week. Guess what? Look around you. Look how much God has blessed you. Amen. What you have doesn't belong to you. God is just lending it to you for a short period of time. And then it is going to be given to somebody else. If you don't give it to him, he's going to get it anyway. Amen. So, and if you give it and you want it back as soon as it hit the plate, keep it in your pocket. God doesn't want it. God loves a cheerful giver. We should give to God because he's given us so much. I'm, one of the scriptures that I would use in your hearing would be 1 Corinthians 16 and 2, and it tells us when we should give. And upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by in store as God has prospered him that there be no gathering when I come. Don't wait till he, it's going to be too late. And then there are many examples in the New Testament on how we should give. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to make this bold statement. And that is, in the Old Testament, they, they at least gave a tenth. <laughs> and all righteousness should exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees. So I'm not telling you how much you should give. But I'm telling you one thing. God loves a cheerful giver. Amen. In 2 Corinthians 9 and 6, but this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. And he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man according as his purpose in his heart. So let him give, not grudgingly, or of necessity, for God love a cheerful giver. We're going to give prayer for the collection that is about to be taken up. And just remember. That you're not giving it to Brother Samson. You're not giving it to Brother Bash. On, you're giving to God. Amen. And if Brother Bash and Brother Samson and Brother Turner and, and Brother Babers misuse it, God is going to hold us Amen. in account. Yes, 
Let us go to our Heavenly Father in prayer. Eternal God, our Heavenly Father, it's once again that we approach our throne with thanksgiving. Yeah. Thanking you for all that you have blessed us with. We thank you for uh, your darling son, Jesus Christ, in whom you sent into the world yeah. to redeem us from our sins. And, oh, Heavenly Father, we pray that these monies that are being collected will be used for the upbuilding of thy kingdom. These and other blessings we ask in thy darling son, Jesus Christ's name. Amen. 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 Now, I don't mind singing. I just don't have to lead every song. So I'm going to ask my brother George G. to come up and, and give us one. Amen. 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 It's all right. Let the church say amen. amen. Let the church say amen again. Amen. Now, I grew up on the Red Book, so I grew up on it. Yes, sir. So it's 346 in your Red Books. Oh, yeah. Come on now. 346 in your Red Books. Those of us that have been in the Church of Christ a long time, you should know every word of this song. Amen. 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 Now, I'm probably going to do it a little different, but I'm going to sing it like I feel it. Amen. And if you look at me crazy, it's before the Lord and not you. Amen. God bless you. Let's start in the course. Hold to his hand to my God's unchanging hand. Let's hold to his hand to my God's unchanging hand. And every day you just be your own thing. That's it. To God's unchanging hand, unchanging hand. Oh, time is filled with swift transit. Ups and downs and changes in terms of our wealth. They ignore. Not on earth.
Of this, I mean, after this song by Brother Doug Williams from the Northwest Church of Christ, the next voice you will hear will be that of our dear minister, Brother Kenneth E. Jackson III from the West Valley Church of Christ in Little Rock, Arkansas. Right. Just want to take a moment to have Brother Kenneth and his beautiful wife, Sister Etta, please stand. We want to recognize you and thank you just for taking the time to be a part of this gospel meeting. I just want to get the introduction out the way so after. After Brother Doug sings this song, the next voice you will hear will be that of Brother Kenneth Jackson. And let me reiterate, we're here to worship God Amen. in spirit and in truth. Amen. 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 It's all about God. Amen. Amen. Brother Doug and then Brother Jackson. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Page number 668 in the, in the back of the book. Amen. It's white in this book. I ain't never seen that before. It's usually red. That's all right. These new books, Brother Samson? Yes, sir. All right. Praise the Lord for new yes, books. Sir. Amen. Page number 668. We're seeing the first and last verse. There is beyond the azure blue a God concealed from human sight. And he tipped his God with heavenly dew And framed the world with his great mind Well, there is a God, he is alive In him we live and we survive Oh, from dust our God created man He is our God Our God, who sun upon a tree, a life was willing then to give. Oh, and that he, that he from sin my set me free, and evermore with him could live. Oh, there is a God, he is alive. Survive, 
It is without question that it is good for us to be here. Amen. Ever so mindful that it's because of God that we live and move and have our being. And without him, as Jesus made clear, we could do or be nothing. Uh, I appreciate the invitation, my brother Bash, to be here. I'm starting slow for a reason, because y'all already gone. Um, appreciate the invitation, my brother Bash, and the elders here to be a part of this evangelistic effort. Um, very mindful that it is critically important. It is critically important. It is critically important that we do Bible things in Bible ways. We have a mantra that we use on a regular basis at the West Valley Congregation where I serve. We are the Church of Christ. We speak where the Bible speaks. We are silent where the Bible is silent. We call Bible things by Bible names. We do Bible things in Bible ways. We are the church that Jesus promised to build, the Church of Christ. It's not about us. We, we benefit from it, but it's ultimately about God. And unfortunately, unfortunately, we have a tendency to worship us more than God. And as Paul wrote to the church at Rome, in Romans, I'll just okay. As Paul wrote to the church at Rome in Romans chapter 1 and verse number 28, he gives us the reason why this occurs. For they did not like to retain God in their knowledge. Yeah. Yeah. At the core of who we are and what we do is the word of God. Without it, we have no guidance. All right. wow. We have no insight. We have no marching orders. We don't know how to worship God the way we're supposed to without the word of God. We don't know what salvation is about unless the word of God tells us. We don't know how to do anything relative to what God would have for us to do and be without his eternal word. So for the members of the congregation here, uh, we, as we matriculate through this next few days, it's my prayer that we will end up the better for it. And for those that are here visiting with us, we want you to know that this is about your soul. Yes. This is about the saving or the rescuing of the soul. Let me say it this way, as, as plainly and as succinctly as I possibly can. All of us are God's creation, but not all of us are God's children. We've all been created by God. We have not yet been born into the family of God. So it is critical that as we walk through this lesson and subsequent lessons, that you don't just take my word for it. Be like those in Berea, who were more noble than those in Thessalonica, and that they received the word of God with a readiness of mind. Here's the key point. And they searched the scriptures, whether those things were so. It is critical that whatever we do is based upon scripture rightly divided. So this morning, as we launch into this series of lessons, uh, Brother Bash sent me uh, the theme, God made it plain, let's keep it that way. Yes, sir. Yes. Take it from Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse number 2, All right. which we will address at a latter point. But I want to emphasize to keep something plain is to keep it in its proper perspective biblically. Are y'all still with me? Yeah. So when we go into this text, it's my prayer that for those of you that have been asked to come as a visitor, that you have come with no form or fashion, but to simply understand what God's word says and respond to it as the scriptures says. Okay. Not as we would or we wish, but as the scriptures teach which we will reinforce time and time and time again today through the remainder of our time here. And I'm sure 
that even after my departing, my wife and I get back on the plane going back to Little Rock, that this will still continue to occur because I have a lot of faith in the young preacher here in the person of Brother Bash, who is doing a wonderful job and he is running a very tight ship. Amen. Turn your Bibles to Romans chapter 5. Romans the 5th chapter. Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5. Beginning at verse number 1. And we will conclude at verse number 11. heard what I said earlier, I'm not as young as I used to be either. So I have to start slower, and then we'll move from there. Romans chapter 5, beginning at verse number 1. If you're there, say amen. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulation also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience. Patience, experience, experience, hope. And hope maketh not a shame, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. For when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet peradventure for a good man some would even dare to die. But God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. For the sake of emphasis, verse 9 and following again. Much more then, being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. Paul writes this epistle in about A.D. 56, during his third missionary journey. He writes to a group of Christians who is located in the city of Rome, as we understand by the title of the text. Paul writes this letter from the city of Corinth. The Christians in Rome were under tremendous Roman hostility. The emperors of that day were not supportive of the new so-called way. They were not supportive of Christendom or Christians in particular. They were constantly being pitted 
against Caesar. As we see in Matthew 22, render unto Caesar that which is Caesar's, and to God that which is God's. I want to speak this morning on the subject, heaven's best for humanity's worst. Heaven's best for humanity's worst. We would not know a lot about much of anything were it not be for God. There are some things that the Bible provides us with that only the Bible can provide us with. Where did I come from? Why am I here? And where am I going? The Bible is the only instrument, the only document that can give us that biblical insight. We know that God created us. Where did I come from? Why am I here? Solomon makes it very plain. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the original text, the whole of man. It's not about duty. It's about what makes us whole. But then there is also where am I going? And the Bible is replete with scriptures relative to our end destiny. Aristotle said many years ago, or coined a phrase or a law called the law of the excluded middle. Yeah. Uh. Which is simply saying it's either right or wrong, up or down, left or right, here or there. There's no gray area when it comes to God. Are y'all still with me? When it comes to things that pertain to God and what he designed and desires of us, there's no ambiguity, there's no guessing, there's no subjectivity. It's literally absolute. So as we walk through this dialogue this morning, it's important for us to understand that Jesus is heaven's best for your and my worst. So when we consider that Jesus is who he is. We want to speak to the issue of the text which identified in verse number 11. And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, whom by we have now received the atonement. Yes, sir. The atonement. Consider with me. For a moment, the idea of the atonement. Jesus, during his lifetime, and in particular, during that time where he implemented the Lord's Supper, well. when he implemented the fruit, and, the fruit of the vine and the bread, it was at the time of the impending Passover. Right. Jesus and the twelve were recognizing and celebrating the Passover. Yes, sir. And in order for us to understand the idea of the atonement, we have to consider the Old Testament Passover. Mm -hmm. There was a number of feasts that the Jews kept, such as the Feast of Tabernacles, yes, the Passover, the Feast of Purim, and others. But the Passover was a feast, an annual feast, wherein they recognized they're being delivered from Egyptian bondage. Y'all aren't there yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In order for us to get this, we need to go back to Exodus chapter 12 well. to build a foundation for what we're going to be talking about with regards to the atonement. I don't want to predefine it, without understanding what the text is actually coming from. So when Jesus is our atonement, we talk about the period of Passover on a particular day, and we're going to see that, that the Passover had some peculiarities or some uniquenesses about it that directly align to what we experience today in terms of being saved. Are you still with me? Now, 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 turn your Bibles to Exodus chapter 12. Exodus, the 12th chapter. We won't read all of this, but I want to emphasize 
a statement that is made in verse number four and following. Now, I know I mentioned that I wanted some readers this morning. So if you will, pick up reading at verse number four, and let's walk through the text for a moment to build some foundation. What does the Bible say? And if the household be too, too good for the land. But if the household, this is the recognition of the Passover. Now watch this now. It's the recognition and implementation of the Passover. Watch what the Bible says. And if the household be too little for the lamb, underscore lamb, read. Let him and his neighbor next unto, next unto his house uh -huh. make it in accordance to the number of the souls. Read. Uh, every man according to his mm -hmm. eating make your count. For the lamb. Keep reading, sir. Your lamb shall be without blemish. Your lamb shall be without blemish. Male of the first year. Male of the first year. You shall take it. You shall take it sheep. out from the sheep. Or from the goats. Or from the goats. And you shall keep it up. And you shall keep it up until the fourteenth day, day of the same month. Of the same month, which is nice and read. And the whole assembly of and the whole assembly of the congregation. Of Israel shall kill it in the evening. Read. And they shall take of the blood and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper door post of the houses wherein they shall uh huh eat. And they shall eat the flesh in the right and that night. Uh huh. Roast with fire and unleavened bread. <coughs> and, unleavened bread. And, with bitter and with bitter herbs, they shall, they shall eat it. Now, consider this as we move forward. Verse 21. Then Moses called for all the elders of Israel and said unto them, Draw out and take you a lamb according to your families and kill the Passover. Jesus, or excuse me, the lamb... I'm getting ahead of myself. The lamb is referred to as the Passover. Are y'all all right? The lamb is identified in Exodus chapter 12 as the Passover. Verse 27. <coughs> Excuse me. Verse number 27. The Bible says that they shall say, it is the sacrifice of the Lord's Passover who passed over the houses of the children of Israel in Egypt when he smote the Egyptians and delivered our houses and the people bowed the head and worshiped. Verse 43 the Bible says and the Lord said unto Moses and Aaron this is the ordinance of the Passover, there shall no stranger eat thereof. What are you getting at, Brother Jackson? This is the foundation of what Jesus is experiencing and recognizing uh, in Matthew 26 and other passages. Consider with me verse number, verse number 18 of Matthew chapter 26. If you don't get there in time, just follow along. And he said, go into the city, go into the city to such a man and say unto him, thy house, with, uh, I will keep the Passover at thy house with my disciples. And the disciples did as Jesus had appointed them and they made ready the Passover. What's the point, preacher? Jesus was recognizing the Passover. We're going to get there. We're going to get there. Just bear with me <coughs> for a moment. Watch what 1 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse number 7 identifies in the text. Purge out therefore the old leaven that ye may be a new lump as ye are unleavened for even Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. The Lamb of God, when John sees him coming on the road, when we see John uh, looking at Jesus, 
John 1, verse number 29, he sees Jesus, his cousin, coming from a distance. And he says to the whole multitude, Behold, the Lamb of God would take away the sins of the whole world. Jesus is our Passover. He is the sacrificial lamb. He is, you're going to see, the means of atonement. Jesus is the source of our redemption. He is everything. He is heaven's best for humanity's worst. Turn your Bibles, if you will. It's about to start. I finally got this bug out my throat. Uh, first, uh, Peter chapter 1 and verse number 18. We're going to deal with this idea of redemption, atonement, and we're also going to take a look at another piece of the pie. Watch what the Bible says, verse number 18. For as much as you know that you were not Underline redeem. Read, sir. As silver, as silver and gold from your vain conversation. From your vain conversation. Uh, bro Brother Samson, if you would, give for me, if you don't mind, Leviticus chapter 25 and verse number 25. Leviticus 25 and verse number 25. we got to get an understanding of this idea of redemption. Am I right about it? We're also going to take a look at first our Ephesians chapter 1 and verse number 5, uh, verse number 7, verse number 8, verse number 13, 14, and 15. But watch what the Bible says. Keep reading, Brother Bash. Yes, sir. Uh, verse 18, for as much as you know, for as much as you know, you were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation. Hold on, somebody. The Bible says you were not redeemed from your vain conversation. Understand what he's saying. Vain meaning useless. Vain meaning empty. Vain meaning a waste of time. Uh, vain meaning of no benefit whatsoever. We know that's right because we look at uh, Mark chapter 7 and verse number 7. How be it in vain do they worship me, teach them for doctrines, the commandments of men. Their useless worship was in effect. I got news for you. Solomon made it clear as he was searching for happiness. He says all is vanity and vexation of soul. The point being, no matter what we do, I'm a walker. I messed up already. Uh, what we understand from Solomon is that no matter what we are striving, to gain, no matter what we are striving to obtain, no matter what we are trying to get, uh, it's all a waste of time without God. Yes, sir. So if we understand that life is vain, useless, of no benefit without God, I ought to be seeking Him with everything in me. Amen. So you have not been redeemed from corruptible by corruptible things such as silver and God or gold from your vain conversation. Conversation meaning manner of life. Yeah. Now watch what the Bible says. Read, sir. Received by tradition from your fathers. Received by tradition of your fathers. Well, Lord have mercy. I, 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 Lord have mercy. <laughs> I didn't come up in the Lord's church, for those of you that know of me. Well, uh, amen. Yeah. I came up in Catholicism. All right. uh, I came up when I, my grandfather wanted me to be a Catholic priest. Uh, you heard me right. Uh, he, uh, Lord have mercy. He wanted me to be, I was an altar boy. I was, I was so-called christened or baptized, quote-unquote, according to Catholic teaching. Uh, when I was an infant, uh, I had, a, I had a, a grandfather who was a Knights of Columbus. I was being reared in the tradition of my fathers. But when I came to the knowledge of the Word of God, when I realized what was being taught me was not in alignment with the Word of God, I had to come out of that stuff and align with what the Bible teaches. Some of us here today are in alignment with our family tradition, but we've got to understand that those traditions do not align with the Word of God. And when they do not, we've got to come out from among them and align ourselves with what the Bible is actually teaching. Amen. Now watch what the Bible, keep reading Brother Preacher, what does the Bible continue to say? He says, but with the precious blood of Christ, we have been redeemed mm -hmm. we have been redeemed yes, sir. by the precious blood of Christ. We have been redeemed yes, sir. by the precious blood, blood of Christ. Of Christ. Bible study 
And ultimately, uh, any form of study, you've got to learn to ask questions. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Uh -huh. We've got to learn to ask the right questions. So when the Bible says we have been redeemed by the precious blood of Christ from our useless manner of life, mm -hmm. the question becomes, how? How did I become redeemed by the precious blood of Jesus Christ? Is it just his shedding? Absolutely not. Although that is instrumental, it's not just about his shedding blood. There is a process that God has put in place in order for us to access that blood. And when we learn to access that blood and actually do so, that's when I become redeemed. But not anybody or everybody could redeem us. Are y'all still here? In order for us to be redeemed, the law of redemption, trying to make it plain, the law of redemption is identified in Leviticus chapter 25 and verse number 24 and 25. Go ahead, sir. Watch what the Bible says. And in all of the land of your possessions, yes. you shall grant a redemption for the land. You shall grant a redemption for the land. Read. If thy brother be waxed poor. Here it is. If thy brother be waxed poor. And has sold away some of his possessions. And sold away some of his possessions. And if any of his kin come to Hold redeem on. Him, if any of his kin not K-E-N, but K-I-N. We're talking about family. In order to redeem someone or something, they had to be kinfolk. Uh, am I right about it? In order for somebody, let me get on this side. I'm not, I already messed that one up. Amen, somebody. In order for somebody to be redeemed, only family could render the redemption. So they had to be Kinfolk. Why is that point important? Because Jesus is said to have redeemed us. Well, Jesus came from glory. Go ahead, well, put on this sin sick flesh. Dwelt among us for 33 and a half years. Well, and he became our brother yeah. in the flesh. Yes. And yet he was in all points tempted like as we are, and yet without sin. Well, Jesus is the only one. That had the blood necessary to render our redemption. What does redemption mean? I was a child. Some of y'all know what I'm about to talk about. There was a store called H&S Green Stamp. Yeah, some of y'all know what I'm talking about. The older folk know what I'm talking about. Uh -huh. it, was, it was a store where you could buy some stuff. And every time you bought something, they'd give you a little booklet. I'm old enough to remember this. Oh, yeah. Amen. And, and, and they would give you stamps. Yes, sir. They were little green stamps. Yes, sir. And that you would put them in this booklet. And then you would accumulate those stamps. And then eventually, you could acquire enough stamps to look in a little catalog mm -hmm. and redeem that product yeah, yeah. with yeah. the use of those stamps. Yeah. Yeah. You already paid for the product. Because you got the stamps based on what you paid for. Now it's just time to come back and redeem it. Toaster ovens and things of this nature. As opposed to microwaves. They didn't exist then. Uh -huh. But here, here's the point. Uh, there was a process. Predefined. In order for redemption. To occur. What does redemption mean? It means to buy back. Come on. Your soul. Needed buying back. But in order for your soul to be bought back, your soul need to have the means enough to take care of your issue. Let's make it plain this way. Now I'm coming back to 1 Peter chapter 1. I'm coming back, Brother Bass, so don't, don't, don't get too preoccupied. Amen, somebody. Now, 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 uh, this idea of buying back comes from, if, if in part, Psalms 49 yes, sir. and verse number 8. Listen to what the Bible says. The redemption of the soul is precious. That's good. Uh, you won't preach in the ground. Now. The redemption or the buying back of the soul yeah. is precious. Yeah, yeah. So in order to have our souls purchased back, mm -hmm. it took an equal or greater 
value that's right, that's right. to buy back our soul. The redemption of the soul is precious. We just read a moment ago in 1 Peter chapter 1. We have been redeemed by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. He is the lamb without spot or blemish or any such thing. What's your point, preacher? we got to understand. Watch what the Bible goes on to say. Verse number 20 of 1 Peter chapter 1. The Bible says, who verily uh -huh, was foreordained before the foundation of the world was manifest in these last times for you. Read, sir. Who by him do believe in God seeing, uh huh, gave him glory that your faith and hope might be in God seeing ye purified your souls and obeying the truth the through the spirit of the unfeigned love of the brethren, see that you love one another with a pure heart, fervently. Keep reading, sir. Being born again. Being born again. I told you a moment ago that we're all God's creation, but we're not all God's children. In order to become a child of God, i got to be born into the family of God. Keep reading, sir. Not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. Keep reading, sir. For all flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man as a flower of grass. The grass withereth. Your life is coming to an end. It's not going to end. Uh, it's not going to last indefinitely. You're coming to a close. The old poem, uh, the old poet said it this way. Life is nothing more than a funeral march from the cradle to the grave. March to a baby's cry and a widow's sigh. Time is winding up. So much destruction in the land. God is going to move his hand and time is winding up. I got news for you today. Time is winding up for every last one of y'all, every last one of us, every last one of not one of us in here is coming to a close. All, many of us got more time behind us than we've got in front of us, we got to get our life together. And Jesus is the means where that was made available. But watch what the Bible said: For all flesh, your flesh, my flesh, is like grass. Uh huh. Uh, and all the glory of man is like the flower of the grass. Uh huh. But the word of the Lord. But the word of the Lord. Endureth forever, and this, is the word and this is the word by which the gospel is preached unto you, reader. Wherefore, Wherefore laying aside all malice, laying aside all malice all and all guile and, all, and hypocrisy, and envy, uh huh. And evil, and all evil yes, sir. As newborn babes. Newborn babes. See, see, Peter's word. point is understand that this is coming to a close. Yes, your life, my life, is going to end. Yeah. I got news for you. Uh, I got a phone call this morning from Texas, from the Panhandle. All right. One of our dear preachers. His mother is on her way out. He asked me to have the congregation pray for him. Because her life is coming to a close. Your life is coming to a close. But consider this for a moment. Without the blood of Jesus Christ and our life covering us, our closing days are going to be filled, Paul made it clear, with the wrath of God. Without Jesus in our life. But we're not done yet. Let's go back to Leviticus chapter 16. And we'll get another component of this piece and then we'll work to wrap this up. Leviticus chapter 16, still dealing with this day of atonement that we're going to bring to a close. Look at verse number 6, and we're going to read down through verse number 10. Watch what your Bible says. And Aaron shall offer his bullock, Aaron shall offer his bullock for a sin offering. Which is for himself. Mm -hmm. 
and make an atonement and make an himself. atonement for himself and for his house and for his house and he shall take <coughs> two goats uh -huh. and put them present them before the Lord now, let's, let's, pause. Let's, 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 let's pause here for a second All right. let, me, let, me, let, me, let me bring us down just a little bit Aaron had to make sure that his sins were forgiven and atoned for before he went into the Holy of Holies. Look out now. Work your On the Day of Atonement. One day a year. Only Aaron could go in the high priest. Only the high priest. Go into the most holy place. So Aaron, before he ever went through the curtains of the tabernacle yeah. oh, into yeah. the holy place well, where the showbread was located oh, yes, and the, 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 the candlestick was located right. and the altar of incense was located. Uh -huh. After he had gone through and sacrificed at the brazen altar on the outside, Look out. watch this now, there was a basin yeah. that they had to wash up yeah. first. That's they had to go through some water first to go into the place that God wanted him to minister in. But when Aaron went into the most holy place where the Ark of the Covenant was, he had to go in there right. Because if he didn't go in there right, he died. So history tells us that the Old Testament Jews put some bells Yes, on the phylacteries yeah, yeah, yeah. of the Old Testament come priests. On, come on. And as long as those bells were sounding off, <laughs> as long as they could still hear him moving around in there, everything was just fine. Woo! But they also, they also put a lanyard or a string That's or a rope it. on him because they were never allowed to go in there. Yes, so if the bell stopped moving, Aaron was dead. Yeah. So the only way they could get him out of there Pull him out. Pull him out. Pull him out. Amen. Somebody. This is some real stuff. Now, now, what's the point? Aaron is a high priest. Yes, sir. But he had to atone for himself because he was a sinful man. We're going to see, if time permits, uh, that we have a great high priest. We have a great high priest that entered in once for all. And he had no sin at all. Your sins of mine were placed upon him so that we could be saved. Yes, now, let's build on this stuff because Aaron has to use two sacrificial components. Yes, Watch what the Bible says. And he shall take the two goats, well, verse number seven, and put themselves before the Lord and, and put the him be, the present them before the Lord at the door of the tabernacle. Of the uh huh, read, sir. And Aaron shall cast lots upon the two goats. Watch this now. We got two goats. Well, read, sir. One, one lot for the Lord. One lot for the Lord. The other for the scapegoat. Uh, what? The scapegoat. scapegoat. Yes, sir. So yes, there is a sacrifice yes, sir. and a scapegoat. Look out. Lord have mercy. Oh, Watch what the Bible goes on to say. Read. shall bring the goat upon which the Lord lot fell uh -huh. and offer himself for, the, for a sin offering. Offer this one goat for a sin offering. Yeah, but yeah. the goat on which... The lot failed to be yeah, taken. Yeah, yeah. Shall be presented alive before the Lord. Uh huh. Read on. To make an atonement. To make an atonement for him. Read. And let and and to let him go for a scapegoat into the wilderness. So 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 watch this now. Watch this. We got two goats. Yes, We got two goats. Yeah, yeah. One is to be sacrificed. Well, and the other one is to become what's called the scapegoat. Well, you know the term. Lee Harvey Oswald was considered a scapegoat. Amen. When somebody sins against us, they sometimes make us the scapegoat. They don't want to take responsibility for themselves, so they place it on you. But here's the point. The point is that the scapegoat, the Bible says that the high priest had to lay his hand on the scapegoat, send him out into the wilderness, never to return again. What did it symbolize? We have a sacrifice for sin, and then we have to send in the way of our sin. Jesus is both the atonement, he is both the sacrifice, and the scapegoat at the same time. So when he died on the cross of Calvary, he sent God took our sins away from us in Calvary's cross, and he sent them away in Jesus Christ. Well, now here's your point. Here's your point. Here's your point. We've got to understand that this concept of atonement 
is a reconciliation between us and God. Without the atoning work of Jesus Christ, we cannot be at peace with God. We cannot have peace with God. We will never have the peace of God, and we will never retain the peace from God. The point that we're driving at this morning is that we need Jesus. Yes, sir. You need Jesus. Yes, sir. You don't need Confucius. You don't need Muhammad. You don't need Buddha. You don't need any of these others. You need Jesus. No man can come to the Father but by me. So if you want to make heaven your home, if you want to have your sins remitted or redeemed, you need the blood of Jesus Christ. Now let's wrap this thing up. Are y'all all sure? Y'all all right? Y'all smile and say amen. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 12 and following. Let's bring it to a close. Colossians chapter 1 verses 12 and following. Paul says to the church of Colossae, he says, giving thanks unto the Father. Which he hath made us to be partakers yeah. of the heritage of the saints. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness. Now watch this now. Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness. And you want me to kick that over to you? <laughs> uh-huh. Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness. And hath translated us. Now watch this now. I want you, uh, hold, hold on, brother. See, I said we got to be students. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We got to be students. Right. He hath, H A T H, hath, adverb of time. He hath already done this. Hath delivered us from the power of darkness. Who is he talking to? He's talking to Christian folk. He's talking to those that are in Christ. Those that are in Christ have already been translated, or excuse me, delivered. Uh -huh. From the power of darkness. Yes, sir. Delivered yes, sir. is the word for rescue. Amen. It is the word that we also use for saved. I'm an ex-sailor. And, and, and as an ex-sailor, uh, we, we, all over the oceans, and when we cross the equator, at the international date line, that intersecting longitude, latitude point, Come on, <laughs> the ship would stop <laughs> and we would go through an initiation called a shell back right. initiation. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. Uh, <laughs> Lord have mercy. And, and, and it's, a, it's a, almost an entire day long event. They got you doing some crazy stuff. Uh huh. I can't talk about that part. Uh huh. Consider it hazing in a Navy. Maybe if you didn't do it, it went in your service record that you didn't do it. That was it. So, so, so watch this now. At the end of our particular time when I received my show back uh, uh, certificate, we stopped at the international date line and the um, equator. And when we finished, we all went swimming, or many of us chose to go swimming. Yeah. Out in the middle of nowhere. Yes, yeah. In the middle of the Pacific Ocean. Uh -huh. Loved it. But we didn't just do it haphazardly. All right. We had individuals on the mast, both fore and aft, with guns, looking at the water, to make sure there weren't no sharks hanging out there. Because if sharks started making their way around, we needed rescue. That's right, man. We needed someone higher than us Come on, man. looking down at where we were, see you now. Look out. looking at the dangers that we were surrounded oh, by. Man. And if they weren't, if they made their way close to us, ahead, we needed him to take care of them yeah. and rescue us out, from man. that environment. Come on, come on. We have Jesus yes, from sir. on high. Yes, sir. He died for you or my sin so that we could be rescued yes, from our present condition. But we're not done. He also translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. We'll get to this in more detail later. Body, house, church, kingdom are all the same thing. 
God utilizing different metaphors right. to illustrate right. the significance of the Lord's church. Well, but here, here we go, here we go, here we go. So he goes on to say in verse 14. Yeah. In whom, in whom we have redemption. We have redemption. Blood. Now watch this. I want to emphasize this going forward because we've heard it several times. The blood, the blood, the blood. Am I right about it? Yes, sir. Uh, it's a really all about the blood. Right. Watch what the Bible says. In whom we have redemption through his blood. Through his blood even the forgiveness of even sins. The forgiveness yes, of sins. Uh -huh. So if I want the forgiveness of my sins, yes, sir. I've got to access. The blood. If I don't access the blood of Jesus Christ, I'm still in my sin. And Jesus says, John 8, verse 21, if you die in your sin, where I am, you cannot go. So I need the blood of Jesus in my life, or more importantly, my life in his blood, in order for me to be redeemed, to be saved, to be rescued, to have the reconciliation work or the atonement of Jesus Christ for me. Watch this, watch this. Get from me, if you will, Romans chapter 6, and I'm going to get something we're not, we're not used to looking at. 2 Kings chapter 13. 2 Kings chapter 13. And we're going we're gonna to draw a connection between this. 2 Kings, y'all still with me? Smile and say amen. We're almost done. Amen. So 2 Kings chapter 13, beginning at verse number 20. Watch what your Bible says. Brother Bash, get it for me if you would, please. One more time. 2 Kings chapter 13, verse 20. 2 Kings 13. See, see, that's a stall tactic right there. <laughs> that's what that is. <laughs> he, he ain't there yet. <laughs> we, all, all preachers know that tactic. Yes, sir. Amen. Right, Keep read. reading, sir. Read. And Elisha died. Now watch this. Watch this. Matter of fact, give me verse, give me verse uh, 19 too. 19? Uh-huh. Verse 19. Yeah. And the man of God. And the man of God. Was brought with him. Uh-huh. And said, and said, thou shouldest have smitten five or six times. Yeah, you should have smitten them five or six times. Don't have to deal with the context. I'm just trying to get a little piece of this. Read. That's right. Then hast thou smitten Syria till thou hast consumed it? Right. Whereas now thou shalt smite Syria but thrice. You must, you gotta, you gotta hit them three times. Uh -huh. Or smite them or basically take them out. Yes, Read, sir. sir. And Elisha died. Now watch this. I want to, I, I don't want to run past this. Yes, sir. Elisha Die. Yes, Come on. Let's pause right here. Uh, Elisha died. Uh, Who is Elisha? Uh, the great successor of Elijah. Uh, Elijah uh, was the master of the school of prophets. Yes, Elisha uh, was one of his star pupils. Uh, Elisha uh, was a mighty Man of God. Amen. When Elijah took flight on that chariot of fire. Yes, sir. When God sent that limousine yes, sir. of fire for yes, sir. Elijah. Yes, sir. The Bible says it took him away. There's only two people Look out. in all of Scripture yes, sir. that we read about that has not died. Yes. Elijah yes. and Enoch. Yes. And so Elijah goes back to glory, goes up to glory. And his mantle falls. Yes, sir. And Elisha now has custody of it. Yes, sir. When Elisha gets to the Jordan River, uh -huh. he takes off the mantle, yeah. smites the river, yeah. and the river parts in two parts. Yes, sir. Elisha was a mighty prophet of God. Uh -huh. But the Bible said he died. Yes, sir. Amen, somebody. Uh -huh. And watch what the Bible says next. And they buried and they buried Elisha. Uh -huh. He buried Elisha. Uh, watch the Bible read, sir. Yeah. And the bands of the Moabites, an enemy group comes along. The band of the Moabites coming in at the beginning of the season. Read. Uh -huh. And the coming of the year. Uh -huh. and, it came to pass, and it came to pass. As they were burying a man. As they were burying another man. Uh -huh. Hold on, somebody. Elisha is dead and already buried. But now another man has died. Yes, sir. And as they were burying him, what does the Bible say? That behold, behold, they spied, they spied a, band a band of Moabites. Uh -huh. And they cast the man into the sepulchre. The dead man goes oh, into the grave yes, of Elisha. Yeah. Watch what the Bible says. And when, the men were let down, and when he was let down, yeah. 
He touched the bones of Elisha. He received his. He revived and stood up on his feet. What's the point? We got a dead man yeah. in the grave, yeah. Elisha, the prophet of God. We got another dead man that needs burying. And when they bury him, they bury him in the same place where Elisha is already dead. And when he comes in contact with the bones of Elisha, he begins to revive and go on his way. Yeah. Romans chapter 6. I see it, sir. Romans chapter 6. Yes, sir. Yes, and verse number 3. Like what does your Bible say? Uh -huh. it says, know ye not. He got it for you. Know ye not. That's, that's so many of us. So many of us. Uh, were baptized into Jesus. Uh huh. We're baptized into his death. We're baptized into his death. Well. Wait a minute, we're baptized into Jesus. We're baptized into his death. Why is that important? Because it was in his death that he shed his blood on the cross of Calvary. He was pierced with a soldier's spear, and out forth came blood and water. But God has joined together. Let no man put asunder. God has always kept blood and water together. You can't have the blood without the water. Keep reading, sir. Yes, sir. We're baptized into his death. Baptized into his death. Therefore, we are buried with him. By baptism into death. Like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father. Even so, we also should walk in newness of life. When we are baptized, into the watery grave of baptism, we come in contact with the blood of Jesus Christ. Yes. And when that happens, we're a dead man going in. We're a dead woman going in. I'm in my mess going in. I've got problems going in. I'm struggling on the way in. But I recognize I need Jesus. You need Jesus. No matter what your filth is, no matter what your problems are, you can be cleaned up today yeah. and be given a new life. That's all right. That's why God sent heaven's best, yes, sir. Heaven's best. for our worst. Yes, our worst. No matter how good you think you got, right. you ain't never going to be good enough without you. Right. Woo! Yes, sir. The reason you are here right yes, now sir. Yes, sir. is so that you can be cleaned up yeah. by Jesus right. Christ. That's all right, brother. So let me extend an invitation from the standpoint yes. Yes, sir. of understanding how to get to Jesus. When we got off the plane yesterday, we were driving to the hotel or to the facilities, and my wife and I happened to notice Interstate 10 runs through there. I know it runs the whole length of the country. So let me tell you how to get to my house from here. <laughs> We're going to get on Interstate 10 and go east. Y'all right? Yes, sir. All right. We're going to go all the way. I'm going to make it real simple. We're going to go all the way down Interstate 10 until we get to Gulfport, Mississippi. Come Look on. out, now. Come on. And when we get to Gulfport, Mississippi, we're going to get on Interstate 49. Mm -hmm. And we're going to make a correct turn or a right turn on Interstate 49. Going north. When we get to Jackson, Mississippi, we're going to get on 55. Yeah. Yes, no. sir. That's right. That's going to take me up to Memphis, Tennessee. That's right. That's right. When I get to Memphis, Tennessee, I'm going to get to Interstate 40. That's right. And I'm going to go west on Interstate, excuse me, yeah, west on Interstate 40. I'm, I know I'm going a long way, but it's easy for you to remember. That's right. So when I get to 40 off of 55, I'm going to go west on 40 to Little Rock, Arkansas. That's all right. When I get to Little Rock, I'm taking exit 247. Don't write all this down. <laughs> I'm going to take exit 247, which is Gallagher Road. I'm going to take a left, and then I'm going to get to the stop sign, and I'm going to take another left and an immediate right. I'm going to get home one way or the other. And I'm going to get to the next stop sign and take another left, which is Faulkner Lake Road. I'm going to go up about three blocks. I'm going to take a left turn on the Stone Lakes Road, and then I'm going to take another left on Stonehenge Cove. 
and my house is on the corner of Stonehenge and Stone Links. But if you take a wrong turn, if you choose to find another way, and you're looking for me, you ain't gonna find me. Not where you've gone. And I submit to you, if we want to make heaven our home, we gotta make all the right turns. So let's make it plain this morning. We've got to take all the right roads to get to the right place. So the first road we need to take is what I'm going to call Hearing Highway. Hearing Highway. Hearing Highway. Because of Romans chapter 10 and verse number 17, so the faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I've got to hear what comes from on high. I've got to hear about the gospel of Jesus Christ. His death, burial, and resurrection. It came from heaven. I need to hear that. Then I need to take another road, which we're going to call Believing Boulevard. You can believe right where you are. You can believe that Jesus Christ died for your sins. You can believe he is the Savior of all mankind. You need to believe that he can save you from your sins. Right turn on the Hearing Highway. A right turn onto Believing Boulevard. I like that, sir. A right turn into what I'm going to call Repentance Road. Repentance road. Uh. And I'm told that Repentance Road is an old dirt road. Uh. Because everybody that's traveled it has uh. had to leave all their old dirt behind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look out now. Like repentance that. road. Repentance Except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. Yeah. It's an old yes, dirt road. Right. So we got Hearing Highway, Believing Boulevard, Repentance Road. We've also got what's called Confession Circle. Mm. Because what comes around goes around. Well, if you want, if you won't confess him, he won't confess you. All right. yeah. If you confess him. He is sure will confess you, Matthew 10, 32 yes, and 33. You've got to take all the correct roads, and you can't skip any of them. Right. You've got to take them in the right path as well. Hearing Highway, Believing Boulevard, Repentance Road, Confession Circle. The last of these is Baptism Byway. Come on. <laughs> baptism Byway, because you can't get in Jesus but by way of baptism. Lord, have mercy. You can't pray your way in. Make it plain. You can't hope your way in. You can't confess your way in. We're all one in Christ Jesus. For as many of us as have been baptized into Jesus Christ have put on Christ. I got to be baptized. I know that wasn't good English, but it made good sense. I got to get baptized into Jesus Christ if I want my sins to be remitted. All of us in here, some are and some are not children of God. Some are and some are not in the church that we can read about in the Bible, the yeah, church right, of Christ. Right. That's all right. If I need to be in the, listen, you cannot be in Christ and not in his church. That's right. It is a spiritual, biblical, divine impossibility. If you want to be in Christ, if you want heaven to be your home, you got to get in Jesus. And you can't get in him without being baptized into his church. We're going to deal with it in more detail. We need, we, need, we, need to, we need to consider this. We need to consider this. So where are we at? We're, we're, at that, we're at that place where God sent his best because we were at our worst. But we can become better when we get in Jesus. And all of us got some work to put in. Amen. Amen. The blood of Jesus yes, is the only thing precious enough Amen. to save you and I from our sins. Amen. So what are you going to do? What decision are you going to make? Listen to what Paul said to the church at Rome in Romans chapter 6 and verse number 17. But God be thanked that you were the servants of sin. Yeah, yeah. But you have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine. Being then made free from sin, you became the servants. Of righteousness. You can't be what God would have for you to be until you choose to obey Him. Can't do it your way. Can't do it my way. 
We've got to do it God's way. And if you want, we're going to talk about later this afternoon, if you want His Holy Spirit, listen to what Acts 5, 32 says. The Spirit is given to all them that obey Him. It's not optional. It is a reoccurring theme throughout the entirety of the Scriptures. So what are you going to do? Do like Joshua said. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Make the decision. Don't be like Felix and Festus, where they hear the truth of God to the point where they're trembling, and he sends Paul away saying, I'll call for you at a convenient time or season. Sometimes truth is an inconvenient truth. It moves you away from your place of comfort, from your place of, of convenience. It requires of you that which only God can expect of you. What are you going to do? How do I respond to that? You heard it. You believe it. You made a decision to repent of your sins. We will ask you to come forward when the song is in, uh, extended. Come forward, down these aisles, give me your hand, God, your heart. We will take your confession like that of the Ethiopian eunuch in Acts chapter 8, verse number 37. When the eunuch said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Yes. Following that confession, you were baptized in water for the remission of your sins, Acts chapter 2, verse number 38. Washing away of your sins, Acts 22, and verse number 16. Cutting away of your sins, Colossians chapter 2, and verse number 10 and 11. Um, Answer of a good conscience toward God, 1 Peter chapter 3, verse number 21, and many other, many other more. But ultimately, it will give you the new life. I would give you stand and sing the invitation song. Do you need to obey the Lord today? Don't hesitate this morning. Make the decision. Just the blood of Jesus Christ. His blood was shed for you and I. He's bidding you to come. He's bidding you to come. Why don't you come and obey the word of God? Tell the Lamb of God. Tell Jesus you have come to obey God. Make it your life's decision to obey Jesus. Before it's eternally too late. Just Won't you come? Don't hesitate. And wait not to soul. If you're pondering, if you're questioning, come forward, give me your hand, God. Preaching in Champaign, Illinois at the time. And as I was preaching, there was a young man, there was a brother in the church, and it was Robert, uh, uh, Brother Robert, and he was blind. And he was very faithful, and he, you know, when it came time for reading scripture, we uh, collected a whole Braille Bible. Mm -hmm. And so I would notify him in advance so he could bring that particular volume with him because one volume was like 10 inches thick. So he'd bring that and he would actually be able to read scripture during the worship service. Yes, um, but his son had gotten out of prison. And when he got out of prison, he started bringing his father to worship. He wasn't a Christian. His son wasn't a Christian, but his dad was. And so incessantly, we would talk to him as he was leaving the other corner. Uh, we tell Stephen, look, you know, we'll study with you, we'll try to help you. Uh, I know Brother Jack, I can get my life right, but uh, I'm just not ready yet. Okay. So uh, I had to go to Cincinnati, Ohio, to go do a, a men's activity. 
and and um, we drove by brother brother Robert's house. And there was all this police tape. Mm. All over that, the whole block was was secured. My goodness. The yellow police tape was over there, and I knew Brother Robert lived there, so I wanted to check and see uh, what was going on. So I talked to, him, got out of the car, and talked to one of the detectives. And said, I told him, I said, look, one of our members is right here. I just want to check and see, uh, is he okay? He said, yes, he's okay, um, but his son was just murdered mm. across the street in the basement of another house, right across the street from his daddy's house. Mm. Robert hadn't been out of prison three years. Mm. Uh, young man in his late 20s. Mm. He died unexpectedly over some girl. Mm. I submit to you, mm. you think you got all the time in the world. Come on, yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll get it together, Brother Jackson. I'll, I'll yeah. obey at some point. I'll, I'll, I'll do what I need to do when I think it's right. Well, you need to stop doing the thinking. Let God do the thinking for you. Yes. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Because as long as you're thinking, you'll continue to procrastinate. Make a decision to obey God because yes. your final day is that which your condition rests in. When you die, that's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Mm -hmm. If I die outside of the Lord, then I'm in trouble. Yeah. We read the text, yes, sir. Romans 5, the wrath of God. Yes, sir. When Jesus comes back, he's not coming back the same way he left here. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The Bible says in 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse number 7, do you are troubled, rest with us. Mm -hmm. And the Lord Jesus shall return uh, in, uh, with his mighty angels in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and obey not the gospel, the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. He's coming back with vengeance this next time. Yeah. Yeah. That troubled me. Vengeance is payback. Uh -huh. mm. That's what it is. Well, Who is he paying back? Those who obey not the gospel mm -hmm. and those who know oh not God. God. That's right. Make it plain, God. If you have heard this message Come on. Come on. and choose not to obey it, add to me. But understand, with that comes potential consequences that you are not ready to receive. Don't let this be that defining moment in your eternal, eternal uh, condition that says to yourself, I wish I had, I thought I had, I thought I had time to. Don't let this moment, because this moment is going on record. That's right. When you leave here, if we don't obey it, we're in trouble. Mm -hmm. Many of us know this, so we obeyed it. My daughter said when she was eight, that Daddy, I don't want to, I don't want to be left behind. I don't want to be left outside again. We have been holding her off for two years. She was talking. That's the one thing about having a father as a preacher. <laughs> She'd been hearing it and hearing. It. She understood it. So, so I'm saying that it's not difficult. Frankly, it's pretty plain. Yes, sir. That's right. Yes, sir. It's pretty plain. It's just a matter of taking the initiative to do what God says do. Yes. Yes. But Douglas is going to sing one more stanza of the song. This song is intended to encourage you to come forward. Come on. Obey God before it's determined too late. Yes, sir. That's right. I'm learning to leave. I'm learning. Won't you obey him? Won't you obey him today? Come learning to lean Don't lean upon yourself. Lean on Jesus. Won't you, won't you do what the Lord would have for you today?
turn the services over to Brother Bash. One of the things that I have a tendency to do, um, we see those that are standing, but I don't want Brother Bash to have to answer for what I've said. So if you have any questions about yes. anything that I've said, Come on. I want to make myself available. The truth doesn't hide. Yes, sir. Woo! And, so, and so if there's anything that somebody didn't understand, uh, needs more clarification on, I'm more than happy at the moment to respond to that question. Yes, so is there anybody that has a question about something that I've said? On my left, your right. Mm -hmm. This is extended particularly mm -hmm. to those that are not in Christ. Yes, sir. That's it. Yeah, and make sure that's, that's clear. That's right. On my right, your left. Not in Christ. Okay, not in Christ. So with that said, um, let me leave you with this because we may not see again, uh, one another again beyond this day. Mm -hmm. If you met me and forgotten me, you've lost nothing. Mm. Uh. But if you met Jesus and lost him or forgotten him, you've lost everything. everything. Yes, sir. So by all means, get yourself in the Lord before it's eternally too late. God yes, bless you. sir. Amen. Thank you. Right. Let the church say amen. amen. We have a few that are standing. We'll start with Sister Monkeisha. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sister Monkeisha. Brother Paul. Uh, of course, I want to say thank you for the service today. Mm -hmm. um, this prayer for me because I have a job interview today at 3 o'clock. Mm -hmm. So just pray that um, if it's meant to be, it's meant to be. And if God wants something else, you'll let me know. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yes, Sister Leticia. Are there any others who have a prayer request? I uh, also want to say thank you, Brother Jackson, Amen. for that for that word, for teaching us, making it plain. Yes. Amen. Also want to say uh, we have a few more prayer requests from Sister Jackson, uh, Sister Hill, uh, Brother Gant. Uh, continue prayers for the Babers family and Bob Boyd is asking for continued prayers as well as Sister Haddock. So everybody, let's go to God on behalf of those who had requested prayer. And let me say this. If anybody wants to obey the gospel, it's not too late. Amen. Well, if you're worried about people, don't worry. Pull me aside. Pull somebody aside. We'll make sure your soul is that important to us. So let us pray at this time. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we humbly approach your throne of grace this morning first to say thank you. Thank you for allowing us to come and worship you in spirit and in truth. We thank you for your manservant who has delivered your word and made it plain. We're thankful for all those who heard the word. We're thankful for those who realize that, that there is one Lord, one faith, one body. But, Father, we know that you sent your best just for our worst. We ask, Heavenly Father, at this time, a special prayer for Sister Jackson. Continue prayers for her, her family, her church family. Continue prayers for her home. And she's always mindful for praying for those who are homeless and the children. We ask a special prayer for Sister Hill 
asking God that you continue to pray for her and her son, her health, her family, and she's always mindful of the Rosa Church family. We pray a special prayer for Brother Gant. He's asking prayers for strength and uh, forgiveness of sins and making wants to make the right choices. We pray that you give Brother Gant the wisdom and knowledge that he needs according to your word. Continue prayers for the Babers family. Continue to pray for Brother Babers as he continues to recover from his procedure. And continue to pray for all the family and doctors that are attending to him. We ask a special prayer for Bob Boyd. Continue prayers for strength for him and his family. And that he's having surgery and that everything th things go well. Yeah. We ask a special prayer for Sister Haddock who is asking prayers for guidance and healing. And please keep her safe while she's on the road. We're thankful for Sister Monkeisha, God. You have, she's recognized that you have blessed her, and uh, God, it's suffice it to say, she's just said that you worked it out, and we're thankful for that, God. We pray for Brother Paul. He's thankful for um, all that, uh, the Word of God. He's thankful for Rosa Road, but he's also asking prayer um, that the interview that he has will go well, if it be your will, that he gets this job. And we pray for Sister Letitia. She's thankful for the Word. She's thankful for the message delivered by Brother Ken. She's thankful for Rosa Road. She's thankful for her minister. Continue to pray for her sister who had a baby, that her body would adjust to having a baby. And she's asking prayer for faith in her family. Dear God, we come all standing before your throne, a guilty distance for you from you, and we ask God that you would please forgive us of our sins, help us to overcome those things that easily beset us, yeah. and help us to always focus on the cross. Right. These and all things we pray in your dear son Jesus Christ. Let all those who love the Lord say, Amen. 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 Good words again. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Brother Jackson. Amen. 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 Well, it is time to end our worship, our official worship with the song. And I'm going to ask whoever does the closing prayer to bless the food. And um, stand up, y'all. Let's go. Troubles on times are here, filling his heart with the freedom we all hold in. Now is that say, and humble your heart to the face of the chance, say, seek the way, pilgrim, try Christmas away. to our Heavenly Father. Let's bow. Heavenly Father, we ask that you give us the guidance and protection through this week. We ask that you allow us to return at this appointed time without harm, hurt, or danger. Yes. Lord, we also come to you and give thanks for those who have prepared the meal for our nourishing of our bodies. In Jesus' name, allow us to commune and break bread with each other. Amen. 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 Please be seated for announcements. God is good. All the time. Yes, sir. God is good.
So at this time, we have our announcements. Um, we certainly want to uh, thank Brother uh, Jackson for that message. We just thank the Lord. I'm uh, just eager and looking forward by the grace of God for the coming days this week, uh, as Brother Jackson will be here for the gospel meeting uh, today and all the way through Wednesday. I think it's the 10th that is that date. So we're very thankful. Thank you, Brother Jackson, as many have said. And I want to thank Brother Doug for leading the songs for us Amen. this morning. We're very Amen. thankful for that. And also the members of Straight Company that also Amen. got up in that. Uh, so we are very thankful for that. Uh, at this time, I want to uh, recognize those of, uh, that are visiting with us. We have many visitors' cards, and I'm sure I may have, there may be some that are missed in the audience this morning. So I'm going to announce the cards, and then I'll give those that are uh, amongst us in the audience also the opportunity to stand and introduce themselves. So the first card I have is from Quincy Stevens. Quincy Stevens, you would when I call your name. Oh, yeah, back in the left corner here. He's from Tucson. We're very thankful to have you. Want to, anything you want to say, Pussy? Uh, it, was, it was definitely a fun experience today. Amen. 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 Praise God. <laughs> God is good. That is good. Good. Yeah, uh, next one I have is uh, Monique Galls. Monique Galls, is that correct? Yeah, it's good to have you. You're, she's here from Milwaukee at Brentwood Church in, uh, in Milwaukee. So we're very thankful to have you all this way. Uh, anything you want to say? No? Okay. Good. Next card I have is Kimberly Baber uh, from um, Phoenix. here in Phoenix. Okay. Good, Kim. How are you doing? Thank you. The songs that we sung this morning took me back to my childhood with my paternal grandmother. And this must be a universal songbook because many of the songs we shared this morning, <laughs> as a little girl, I heard them sing. We're good. Amen. Glad we're able to the your spirit. Next, one, next card I have is from Marva Harris. Marva Harris? Yes. Visiting from, with Sheila? Yes. Excellent. Thank you, Mom. Okay, next uh, card I have is uh, uh, Jose Mend Mendoza from Tempe. Oh, yes. I'm visiting with Brother Freddie. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I just want to say thank you for inviting me and uh, thank you for having me. It was a great service. Uh, I've never been at a church with like this much energy before. Amen. Oh, praise <laughs> the Lord. <laughs> God is good. And uh, also visiting with uh, Brother Frederick is uh, Austin. Arroyo? Yep. Right. From yep. Tippy. Yeah, what's up, guys? Hey, um, thanks for inviting me. It's a great service, yeah. a lot of good energy. Thank you for the great message. Amen. I've um, been, been a believer for a long time, but it's always great to be able to see how people always come together and be able to worship and hear God. Yes, sir. Amen. Thanks for having me. Amen. 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 Do I have any other visitors on my left that I didn't call your name would like to stand and introduce themselves? No? Any on my right that would like to stand and introduce himself? I'll introduce my family. Okay. Sister Meekins' family? My cousin Keisha and her two grandbabies, my cousin Jacqueline. Hi, cousin Keisha. Praise the Lord. Oh, praise God. Good. Welcome. Welcome. I want you all to know that you are honored uh, guests and welcome, and we encourage you to please. Please come back and visit with us uh, anytime you're in, in town or if you live here, please come and be with us again. Amen. Also, uh, as Brother Sampson often says, okay, Brother Sampson often says, uh, if you're not greeted on your way out the door, they are probably guests also. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Brother. Yeah. Uh, my name is Eric. I just know my wife. We're actually from Phoenix, oh. and um, we're here visiting uh, Edna and oh. Kenny. Ed's my cousin. Oh, okay. Good. Yeah, praise the Lord. Uh, we recently reunited and been about 30 years since we were. Oh, and, praise the Lord. And it's been a long time, so it's a blessing just to be here with you. Amen. Kenny, I was, I was surprised. I didn't know you were brought up Catholic. I was too. And, 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 but I was like, when you said that, I was like, wow, what a connection. You know, and, and it's great to see who's called. Yes, sir. Yes. 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 So, thank you for having us. Absolutely. Amen. We enjoyed it. And your name again, one more time. Eric. 
Eric, okay, gotcha. Good. Thank you very much. Thank you again. You're all our honored guests. So I'll move on with announcements. Um, I don't get to do this often, so I'm going to talk. Well, no, I'm just joking. <laughs> but uh, I certainly want to thank the straight company. Today. We had a, those who didn't get to, uh, man, didn't get to participate in the gospel concert last evening. Man, we had a treat. It was a wonderful time, wonderful singing. It was Absolutely. such a blessing. We're so thankful for you guys and appreciate the work that you're doing, the, the, the singing, the spiritual uplifting. We just appreciate that very Thank much. You, and man, I, went, uh, I was listening to it all the way home. I went in uh, on Spotify. Yes. <laughs> I should yes. buy them, but it's on Spotify too. So I certainly enjoy that. We appreciate it very much. So we appreciate that. And again, for those who are not aware, we will be having the gospel meeting uh, throughout the week. I encourage you to come back. As you can see, Brother Kenneth uh, is very studied in the Word, and we're thankful for that, and we look forward to hearing more. But all glory to God, all praises to God. And we just thank uh, God for putting someone such as Brother Kenneth in our path to be able to come out and share the Word of God with us. So we're thankful for that. So I'll move on to the other announcements. I know you guys want me to move on ahead. But uh, please, everyone who's with us, please stand or stay, stick around at the end of the service as we, once we finally get out of here today. We have uh, fun and gathering and more fellowship, and we have food, lunch, and all of that in the back. Please stay around and, and spend time and continue to fellowship with us. Following that, we will be, have our first Sunday singing. Uh, we'll probably have more people coming in for the singing, so it'll, it, we, we have a little tighter, but we're very thankful to have that, and we look forward to the first Sunday singing. And then we will resume again for our evening worship service at 3? Is it 3? 3.30. 3.30, okay. I missed that. I didn't read that. So other than that, uh, I hold up this bulletin. If you would, on your way out, get your bulletin. There are other things and events that are going on in the area. This bulletin that Sister Turner puts together is very detailed. Please grab your one to find out about the other things that are going on. So at this time, I ask the elders of Brother Bash, are there any other announcements that we need to make at this time? Uh, just give us a few minutes to get things prepared. I want to thank Rosa Rose for all their labor of love. Uh, and everybody who has a labor of love, so when the food is ready, we'll, be done, we'll know. And uh, that's all I have. Brother Samson, anything? Yeah, well, I just want to once again, stand up. That's a great company, stand up. And we just want to thank you guys for taking time out of your busy schedule to come and be with the Rosier Road Church of Christ. Amen. Amen. We are dismissed. We are dismissed.
Okay. 